says Israel is a rebellious people. That is the context of that chapter. And our people will not listen to what God says. So one of the things he said we will do, we will not. We will wear a molten image of gold and silver, and he said to throw it away. But our people are rebellious is what the chapter is about. And we love to hear lies. The same temptations you struggle with, some of us struggle with. You understand? So what temptations do you struggle with? Do you mind? Huh? Drugs. Say it again? Drugs. Jugs? Drugs. Oh, drugs. Okay. Okay. So whenever you do, so whenever you're doing these different things, right? Does it mess with your mind? Are you clear minded to think at that point? Um living in a false state of mind? Yeah. Right. Like to think rightfully. You can't really do it at that point because you're not sober. Right. It's the book of First Corinthians, chapter ten and verse thirteen. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. So it says there's no temptation that has come up on you that's, that's, that's outside of what anybody else don't went through. Let's Therefore see. hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able. Meaning you won't be, a, you won't be tempted more than you can handle. So you can handle the fact that you're going through the drugs. You can actually handle it. The fact of the matter is, is you don't think you can handle it. It said God won't put it on you if you don't think you can handle it. He won't tempt you with it if you don't think you can handle it. But we really don't believe what the Bible says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's what we will say. But we really don't believe that because when that temptation comes, we fall right to it easily. Right. Versus considering what we already know. Read that. Read it again. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, uh -huh. but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Always give you a way to escape. Always. Whenever you're, whenever you're thinking about, whenever you think about doing drugs, are you by yourself? Are you usually alone? You're usually alone, right? Why? Because if you're alone, then who's there to stop you? No one. <laughs> no one is there to stop you. That's why we tell our people, hey, look, come to the school. Come learn who you are. Because now if you're around righteous people, they're not going to allow you to do that. Be like, hey, bro, I'm struggling. And you have to admit that you're struggling. Because a lot of people will be like, no, I'm good. I'm straight. And won't even admit to themselves. So they'll go out, away from the brothers, get out there by themselves, and go do their dirt. Whether that be with women sleeping around, or mongering around, or whether that be with doing drugs, or whether that be with doing all kinds of stuff. Because we get away from each other. That's why we're called brothers in the first place. Because brothers look after brothers. We family, but we don't want that family because that family ain't gonna let you just do what you wanna do. We gonna correct you. Matter of fact, let's get that 1 Corinthians 3.16. Because of the fact that you don't recognize who you really are. You don't understand how important you are to God. That's why you will destroy what he gave you. You will tear it up and put all kinds of poison in it and make it drop dead. And, and God is going to allow you to do it. And then he's going to judge you at the end for it all. Right. Read. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Now ye know, now ye that ye are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. Your body is. So when you put things in it that's not supposed to be in it, then you wonder why, well, I can't function like I used to. 
Hey, shoot, you, you did it to yourself. And we're going to read, read. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God uh -huh. and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. He said, don't you know that you are the temple of God? Don't you know that? That's what it's saying. It's like, how in the world are you doing this and you know you're the temple of God? And this right. ain't just for you. It's everybody in earthshot. Right. Because they do the same stuff. They destroy their temple too. Right. It says, don't you know that you are the temple of God? Read on. If any man defile the temple of God, if you put stuff in your body that is not supposed to be there, read, him shall God destroy. He's going to destroy you. Now you wonder, look, and that even goes with the foods we eat. Right. Not just with the drugs, not just with the, with the over drinking and things like that. It's also with the foods we eat. Right. Because it's a whole lot of pork out here. Right. Bring it out. <laughs> but our people walking around with gout. Hot blood pressure, cardi uh, uh, cardio uh, arrest, what is it? Cardiac. Cardiac arrest, having all the heart problems, diabetes. diabetes and everything because they're eating the wrong food. They're defiling themselves. God says he's going to destroy you, and that's how he does it. But if you're out here and you're doing drugs, all of a sudden you don't have your senses no more. Now certain things don't work the same. Your mind is not clear no more. So as a grown man and as grown people, what are we supposed to do? Let's get Timothy's. Let's go to Timothy's about being sober. Let's read that because in order for you to be sober, you have to have a clear mind. But our people, we are clouded by all the distractions of the world, by the drugs, by the, by the fornication, by the adultery. We are jacking ourselves up. But we sit up here and we'll call ourselves, hey, what's going on with you, king? Mind you, we don't act like kings. Right, right. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 1. Uh -huh. But speak thou things which become sound doctrine. We must speak things that become sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is God's laws. That's good doctrine. Read. Because it's a sound, you, you have to have a fundamental sound mindset to be able to do what God says. You can't do it if you're all over the place. Right. That the aged men be sober. Great. It said the aged men must be sober. Yes, sir. They already know they're Israel. Okay, so y'all know y'all the Israelites. All praises. All praises to the Most High. So y'all are out here, and of course today is Sabbath. Then he actually asked a good question. What do we do when we are tempted? Do y'all have an answer? What do we do? You say pray? Okay, pray. Okay, what you say, mother? I would say pray, and I would say, um, you know, discipline yourself and resist okay you said discipline yourself yes that is deep that is deep give me wisdom of solomon hold that wisdom of solomon one and four i love that statement discipline because we have to show forth discipline to not fall to what you're dealing with it's very disciplined for you to not put the wrong things in your body it's very disciplined for you to keep the sabbath day am i right yes. now y'all out here on the sabbath you just said discipline now we now now mind you, I'm not bashing you. I'm just letting you know what we see, because y'all are standing in front of your brother, and I'm talking to my sister. That's it. That's the Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter one and verse five. Uh -huh. For the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. So if we are being deceitful with God, that Holy Spirit of di discipline is a Holy Spirit. It's a Holy Spirit, not evil. Now people use discipline, they go do all kinds of drugs. That ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about discipline to do what God said. That is a Holy Spirit. Right. But it says that, that spirit will flee deceit. It will run. It will flee lies. It will flee people that will not do what God said and use it deceitfully. Right. That's what it just said. Read on. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And wisdom will not be with people that will remove their thoughts from understanding of God. So if you remove yourself from the understanding of God, God will take his spirit from you. So now, you knowing to keep the Sabbath will go out of the window. Now you'll just break it and won't think nothing of it. You knowing to keep the high holy days will go out of the window. You will do whatever you want to do. And God says he will reserve that person for death. Right. When you read 2 Thessalonians. Oh, is it 1 Thessalonians? Read on. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. And it said, will not abide when unrighteousness comes in. 
Shalom Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So by you struggling with the drugs, God can't, he can't use you until you fix that. You have to repent and stop. That's what that's saying. Same thing that goes for y'all. Y'all won't be able to teach my daughter. If I ever have one, y'all would not be able to teach her and be able to help her because God says he's going to take that wisdom and understanding from you. Y'all won't even remember your Israelites no more. Like imagine, imagine waking up one day and you can't tell nobody you're a Jew. Right. That's scary. To me, that is scary. That's what pushes me because I'm afraid. Go to uh, Psalms uh, 110, 111, verse 10. And I'm just talking to my sisters. If y'all have any questions, ask. I want y'all to ask. You have any more questions? So what now? Without being in the church environment. Okay, without being in church environment. What you got? That right there is my biggest hindrance. That is your hindrance. Okay, good. Now, we're going to read this and then I'm going to deal with that. He just said, without being in a church environment, that is his biggest struggle because he doesn't have anybody to stop him from going to do what tempts him. Okay? So we're going to we're gonna read how you fix that. We're going to read it. Read that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Uh -huh. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So that Holy Spirit of discipline... And this right here says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Right. So before you get that wisdom to apply over and over to have discipline to do that wisdom, you must first have fear of God. You must first fear breaking his Sabbath. You must first fear dressing him modestly. If you don't fear that, then why would God give you his spirit to dwell in you? Because y'all y'all are, we just read it earlier before y'all walked over. Y'all are the temple of God. If right. you don't put in it what you should, God's laws, in your temple, he will destroy you. It ain't just drugs. It ain't just having uh, sex outside of marriage. That ain't just, that ain't all it's talking about. It's because you also allow the ways of the world to seep into your mind to where you will do it. Versus doing what God said. You will allow everybody else to influence what you do. And not God. And then we'll say, well, I know I'm an Israelite. And we'll be proud of that. But that's as far as it goes. When people do that, if I was to do that, I'm nothing but a walking piece of charcoal. I'm right. waiting on a bomb to hit and I'm going to burn with this place. That's right. what we're doing if we do that. So I need y'all to stop that. That's why I'm talking to you this way. Because I must tell you, if I don't tell you, ain't your brother, I don't love you. All right? So where we at? Is that song? Yeah, read on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, uh -huh. his praise endureth forever. So the only way you're going to be able to provide that understanding to a younger woman is to do what he said. Right. If you don't, you won't get the understanding, nor will you have the discipline to do it. Therefore, you're waiting on God to send the bombs and you're going to burn her. Get Hebrews 10 to deal with what you had said. Because remember, we're reading the fear of God. You must first fear God to let that drug go. Right. If you don't fear God, you won't let it go. And he's going to kill you. I'm flat out telling you that's what's going to happen to you. Why in the middle of living this, why in the middle of living this simple lifestyle, I do do good works because, you know, once I used to just rob still and, you know, do everything that I wanted, everything I wanted to do to get money. Okay. But now instead of me doing like that, I'll walk up to a complete stranger and ask him for something that I need before I go out there and I steal from my fellow brothers and sisters anymore. Okay. And I'm going to show you something about that. Find that beggar's life in Sirach. Give me that. Read that. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 23. Matter of fact, go up one. Uh, no, 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 jump down, uh, 24. Verse 24. No, 23. I like 23. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. That, sisters, did y'all hear what that just said? Read it again from the top. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith 
we must hold fast the profession of our faith. Y'all are professional, supposed to be professional law keepers. Right. <laughs> hold fast to the profession of your faith. To be a professional at something means you practiced it over and over and over again to where you got it down pat. Right. So the thing is, you have to admit to yourselves, I ain't where I need to be. And then do so to get there. Practice it over and over to where you become a profession in your faith. You right. want to be a professional law keeper. That's how y'all have to be. Read on. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. Because they said we must do it without wavering. So we cannot get weak. Oh yeah, people are going to tempt you. Everybody's going to ask you to come out here. Like, y'all know that it's only two-thirds. Two-thirds is going to burn here. Only one's going to make it. Right. So if you get three of you, the math says one of you. But what y'all could do is do it together. Let everybody else be the two-thirds. Not y'all. That's right. <laughs> Not y'all. Y'all, it don't have to be that way. But you will choose it. And God is going to allow you to choose which way. It's either life or death. We don't get life, death, and something else. It's only life or death. That's right. it. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. Before we even came here, right? right? We were struggling with the fact we just wanted to take a walk, right? Okay. So, you know, we know that it's the Sabbath. And then we decided to come this way, oh, and then we run into y'all, right? <laughs> that's and a good thing. That's so, the y'all way. So that's thing. what I'm saying. So, do you not believe that this was a divine order? No, I know, so I know for could... a fact the fact that you stopped here is not of you, it was of okay. God. Right. I know for a fact. Matter of fact, where is that at? Proverbs what? Yeah, but we want to finish at Timothy's too. You got it? Yep. Here we go. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20 and verse 24. Uh -huh. Man's goings are of the Lord. <laughs> Y'all walking by here was of God. <laughs> Man's goings are of the Lord. So like you said, we were debating about going on a walk. All praises you ran at us when you walked. Read on. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Because you didn't get up thinking you was going to run into us. Say, so how can you understand your own way? God had to give you the instruction. People think, oh, well, I did it on my own, just like you. You didn't stop her on your own either. But that, that like you said, it, it was of God. Yes, it is. And it was of God for us to correct you so that you will know, you know what? I got to get my act together. I can't be walking around here thinking I'm normal like everybody else. I'm not normal. I'm better than everybody else. Right. If you don't feel that way, then you ain't going to act like that. That's right. If you don't believe that, you will never act like you're above everybody else. Right. Yo. You know, people see the garments and say, oh, man, they out here dressed like purple Power Rangers. We don't care. I think they fly. I love them. That's right. I know for a fact I look different than everybody else out here. And when we walk up, people's heads turn, and I love it. Right. Whether they don't, whether they hate us for looking this way or whether they love us for looking that way, I love it. Right. But if we don't believe that, then why would we do it? Why would we be ashamed of it? Right. That's the same thing goes with actually doing the commandments. Right. right. A lot of our people don't want to keep the Sabbath because we can't buy, we can't sell, we can't cook, we can't work. But if we do so, you'll have all your family want to do everything Friday night to Saturday, all the deals, and they want to get you to go with them. Nah, I can't do that. I'm keeping the Sabbath. What? Right. That's how they're going to look at you. Right. And then you like, oh, I don't want them to look at me like that. I don't, I don't want them to do that. <laughs> so we'll trim our ways to seek their love, to make them comfortable versus you out, of you out of comfort the whole time because you're trimming your ways. You're not a professional yet. Right. So we must become a professional at keeping God's laws. How you doing, brother? All right, so read, read on. Here we go. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And that's what we're doing. We're trying to provoke, provoke you. Brother, stay right here, brother. Come on. Come here. But we're trying to provoke our people to good works. Now, you got that 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 uh, that, that uh, cross on your neck, the T. Oh, you go. It is what it is. Now, what does that represent to you? It's a symbol of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's the symbol of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, wasn't it thousands of people that was killed that way? Because mind you, it was two men already up there with him. So which one are you representing? Christ or the two three? The, the two thieves? The one in the middle. Okay, the one in the middle. <laughs> so now, did Christ tell you to wear that? Um, it's not specifically in the Bible. Okay, so why do you do it if you're not 
So is there anything against it? Where are you from? You have an accent. I do. You know where, where I'm from. Okay. I'm just asking. Are you an Israelite? I, I, I am Jewish. I'm, you're, I'm one of the lost tribe of Jews. You're a I'm, Jew, yeah, not I'm, Jewish. I'm, I'm, Jewish I'm, 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 means a fake Jew. one. Yeah, exactly. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, praise the God. Don't leave. Don't leave. We ain't finished. I just want to read you one law. Give me Habakkuk. Oh, where you at? Give me Habakkuk too. I'm going to read what I'm going to read this right here. Read that. This is the book of Habakkuk. What's your name, sir? If you don't mind me asking. If you don't, huh? Uche. Uche. Oh, pretty. Read that. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. Uh -huh. What profited the graven image? What good is it to you? Read on. That the maker thereof hath graven it, mm -hmm. the molten image, and a teacher of lies. Because that image around your neck is a teacher of lies. It does not represent Christ. Ever. Ever. And I'm going to show you. We're going to read. Read on. That the maker of this, of his work, trusted therein uh -huh. to make dumb idols. God is calling it a dumb idol. <laughs> read on. Woe unto him that saith to the wood. Woe, look, this right here says destruction. The word woe means destruction. Woe unto him that saith to the wood. What was Christ hung on? Wood, right? Now you were of images of gold and silver like the Bible said you were. So now, that image of that cross... It said, woe unto him that saith to it, do what? Read on. Awake to the... It says, awake. Why would you tell, why would, why would you sit up here and say, say anything to the wood like it's going to save you? It right. can't walk. It can't talk. Nothing. There are biblical exegesis. What does that mean? You, it's simple English. Biblical, um, you can, what you just said now, you can, it's a can describe in your own way what you're trying to say. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I, I just read the Bible you, about you putting an image on. I did not say that I cannot wear this particular thing. Okay, okay. I'll pray. Stay right there. That's no, 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 Isaiah 30. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, go. Watch. I'm gonna, you I'm said it does not say. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read. I'm going to read that it tells you you can't wear it. I'm going to read that. Uh, look, well, listen to this one scripture. I'm going to read where it says you cannot wear that. You got it? The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 22. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver. And that's what you got to write, a graven image of silver. That's not true. And the ornament of the of thy molten images of gold. And the molten image, because our people like to wear it in gold, whether it's white gold or yellow gold. Read. Yeah, yeah. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress cloth. What shall we do with those images? Cast them away as a mistress cloth. What is a mistress cloth, mother? What, what's a mistress cloth? Brother, brother, listen. What is the context of that particular the, it, it says Israel is a rebellious people. That is the context of that chapter. Yeah, and our right. people will I, not listen to what I, God I, said. I so I one of the things he said we will do, we will not. We will wear a molten image of gold and silver, and he said to throw it away. But our people are rebellious is what the chapter is about. And we love to hear lies. That's what the Bible said. Read on. No, read on. Right there where you at. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress call. Read. Thou shalt say unto it. This is what he should say to the image on his neck. Get thee hence. Get off me. But our people hate God. But they say they love him at the same time. That's not possible. You can't hate him and do and then turn around and say you love him, but won't do what he said. Because I see your image of gold on your neck too, mother. Same thing. Right, right. We're just ready. So what must you do? You can keep the necklace. But the cross itself, what should you do with it? Because it teaches people. Uh, you know what? I know, I know better. So did y'all understand what we read about the image of gold and silver? That we're not supposed to wear these things, nor worship them. But don't people wear the cross and kiss it? And they do the little, you got the little Catholic, they do the little cross across the chest and the head and all of that stuff. What does it do if you're not doing what God said? Nothing. It's zero. It's no effect to you whatsoever. That's why the first question is saying, what good is the graven image? Like, why? That's what he's like, why would you wear that? <laughs> like, imagine us talking to each other. Why in the world would you do that? Right. That's what that's really saying. We have to, when we read the Bible, that's how we talk. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. 
Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.